Streaming to you live from deep within the bowels of the Rose City, it's live in Portland with Chris Franklin! <laughs> this week's guests are musician David Pollack, Matthew Porter of MP Photography, comedian Chris Johnson from The Hip with Adrian Gunn, and Kevin Gorby of Luna's Puppets. Now here's your host, he can put the lime in your coconut, Chris Franklin! Live, we're doing it again for the 12th time. Guys, welcome to the studio audience. Welcome everybody at home on Facebook Live. Uh, I'm really excited to get into this episode. Episode 12. It's April the 23rd. Spring is here. It was kind of a hot day. Um, I've got a lot on my mind. Um, and I'm excited to showcase all the creative artists, musicians, entrepreneurs, everybody uh, on the show today. But uh, <clears throat> first, I wanted to uh, talk about the idea of uh, just kind of overcoming uh, your fears when it comes to your creative work. Uh, a, a notion that comes to me a lot is solution-oriented thinking. Um, we are the sum of our thoughts and our actions that have led us to this life. And uh, going from that space forward, what we want to see in this world, what we want to create in this world, uh, instead of getting down on whatever hurdles may come across, we have to address those hurdles and uh, creatively create solutions to the world we want to see. And uh, I could think of no better way than this show tonight, live in Portland. I'm so excited for all my guests. Uh, my first guest... Uh, He's an awesome musician, and I'm so happy to have him on. Everybody, clap your hands for David Pollock. All right, Portland, what's going on? How's everybody doing out there? Everybody good? Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, my name is David Pollock. Um, I'm a solo act here in Portland. I just came out with a new album. It's called Realignment, and uh, this is one of the songs off it. It's called Be With. We broke up five months ago But now you piss me off Cause you got a new boyfriend I know we should be none of my business But I'm still hurting, baby Can't release these chains Holding my positivity From myself be free I know it should be something different than that But I'm still hurting, baby Yeah, I'm hurting fast, oh I just want something new Something that ain't you It ain't you, oh I just want I wanna be with Whoa, whoa, oh, 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 yeah, yeah I gave in five months ago Tiptoe through life I didn't keep in the scene 
picking back up's a struggle I'm feeling the heat new release I kind of gave up on um, CDs for once so I released this on these USBs here oh, these nice. nifty nifty USBs here it goes boop right inside a little USB <laughs> card so here you go boom um, uh, I got one more for you guys um, I'm gonna do one called Windy City because this one kind of reminds me of summer because I wrote this um, I was in Chicago in my friend's apartment and I was like pouring outside and the weather was really, really bad. And I was like, man, I just want to go outside and like explore, but I'm like stuck in my, stuck in my room. So I wrote this one called Windy City, which is about getting out. And that's what we're going to do right now because yeah. the weather is gorgeous here. <laughs> wow. Cheers to that. So this one's called Windy City. <laughs> Even if they're not mine, 
happy I wanna get in the zone I wanna lose all control I wanna pick up the phone and scream I know I need a long trip Ooh, Got the keys to the web Ooh, Before I lose all my shit Let's go slowly and fadingly La 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 No pretending at all. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was so dope. Um, for the audience at home, how could they get in touch with you? Uh, well, first, I got a show on Wednesday at the White Eagle with Larissa Birdseye dope. and uh, Salvatore Manlo. She could be awesome, so dope. come through. It's a free show. Starts at 7.30. Come through for sure. What um, night is that, sorry? Wednesday night. Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. Cool. Two night. Two sleeps. Two nights. <laughs> um... And uh, yeah, you can get in touch with me. Uh, my website, davidpollockmusic.com. Awesome. That's the best way, awesome. Yeah. Uh, how do we get one of those cards? How do you get one of those cards? Yeah. Is um, there ordering? Yeah, you can on the order website? one of the cards through my Bandcamp page, um, davidpollock.bandcamp.com, or through my website, um, or me personally. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and and then it's all on uh, Spotify and everything. So Ooh, all dope. the streaming platforms. Windy yeah. City, that's my new jam. That's the Thank jam, you, right? That's the Thank jam. you, David. Yeah, you man. like put it all out on the line for I, this. I, I, I. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for, for coming me. out. Yeah. Everybody. You're in your summer gear. <laughs> yeah, I know. You've traveled all over space, the Willamette River. I know, we've got some cleaning up to do. But uh, <laughs> there's a lot of lakes, there's a lot of streams, there's a lot of waterfalls. i got to take you out on a hike. Well, if I could make it out there to the Andromeda universe, I'd go. You know this, Marvin. But I can't breathe, I breathe oxygen. Hey, hey, wait, don't get mad at me. I actually, uh, I, I've got to talk to you about something. Um, your friend, the extraterrestrial. Uh, yeah, yeah. You introduced me as, to him as the extraterrestrial. Uh, we were actually at a bar the other night, and I ran into him. His name's Ski Bob. Did you know that? I think we're probably closer friends than we than he is. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be disrespectful, Mark. <laughs> so what, what happened was we were sharing a few craft beers uh, over at the Elvis room, and uh, Ski Bop and I have a mutual friend. I didn't know this. Really? Ski Bop. You know Matthew Porter? <laughs> I heard he's coming out to the show tonight. Do you know where he is? I heard he's got a call. Like, I think he's out outside the door. Can you go? Uh, do you think you can go get him for me? Ski bop, everybody. Ski bop. <laughs> Literally one of my
my favorite people in Portland. Um, I'm so excited to have him on the stage. Dude's a photographer. He's a rapper. He's a musician. He's got all the things. Plus, he's just an amazing person. And I'm so happy to have him on the team. Um, I'm so happy to have him out and finally sit him down. Uh, Matthew Porter, can you come on out? This is my right-hand man. I don't know if you're familiar with the Lost in Portland podcast, but Matthew Porter has been on it, what, twice? Twice yes. now? We, yes. we introduce every season with an interview with, Matthew, with Matthew Porter. Um, it's warm up here, man. It Jesus. is warm. Yeah. It is warm. Yeah. Is it hot where you live, too? <laughs> right no closet, huh? Jesus Christ. You got all that hair, too? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got something coming. <laughs> So, Matt, I want to talk to you about everything that's been developing, I, I would say, in the past four or five years. Yeah. When I first met you, you were rocking out on the guitar on yeah, Instagram. not that one. About five years ago. Not the I new one. I just got that one. Not the new one from Chicky yeah. Boom. Shout out to Chicky Boom on the guitar, too. Sonny, good looking out. Yeah. Um, awesome guitar. I love that thing. So, awesome. I met you as a musician. Yes. Uh, and then I started seeing your photography work. Yeah. You were out in the gorge. Yeah, uh, and was it the Gorge? Silver Falls State Park. Silver Falls State Park. Then you took me to the Gorge. Okay. Yeah, that's how it happened. You took me to the Gorge. You're like, oh, you ever heard of the uh, Gorge? I was like, <laughs> nah, man. Lived here 23 years of my life. What the f is the Gorge? Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, you know, all these other waterfalls. I was like, oh, no. Know what talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was it was awesome. And it's kind of crazy. You, like, like you mentioned, you grew up here mm -hmm. uh, in Oregon. Yeah. And, uh, and, like some of the first waterfalls yeah. you've ever seen, we've we've seen together. So that's Maldonado Falls. Obviously, everybody's been to Maldonado Falls. We've seen that one a trillion times. Yeah. But yeah. No, I hadn't seen anything. Besides, yeah. Yeah. Maldonado. It's just like. And then we started doing this video series. I don't know if you guys could recognize. Like we went out every, every single yeah. week. Yeah. Every Sunday. To a brand new waterfall. Yeah. We try to discover a brand new waterfall. Uh, it's limitless out here. Yeah, for everybody who doesn't know, her, for everybody who's just like, oh, there's Multnomah Falls. No, like, no. there's <laughs> hundreds yeah. of waterfalls that are all worth the hike. Yes. Um, some of them... Short, long. Yeah. yeah. Some of the hikes harder than others. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, like, you, we've done a whole video series together. Yes. So, we also did videos on the hikes as well so as hiking we would stop and take shots oh awesome <laughs> yes <laughs> am i like the only one that's hot you're like, the, you're yeah. like the, the preacher right Christ. now i don't what do you want to tell me that oh, Jesus. it's waterfalls we went to have mercy did y'all pass the collection plate around before i get on my son <laughs> i'm gonna get your collection brother <laughs> and uh flannel too yeah Got it all. Yeah. Um, it's coming into spring. Uh, but before Finally. we, like, in the midst of our Waterfall se mm -hmm. series, you did a music video. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, you were rapping in the gorge about the waterfalls of the gorge. Basically, our, our weekend adventures. Yeah, that was essentially what it was. And uh, that kind of sparked something in you. I, I would hope so, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so with the release of that video, which was like, I don't know, a year ago. A year ago, yeah. Um, you've been writing, you've been yeah. working, you've yes. been doing like the visuals uh, yes. for... Trying to storyboard. And a whole album. Working on it. Well, I'm going to try like an EP first, you know, something <laughs> a little small, but um, eventually an yeah, album would be awesome to share with everyone with... What I tell you, I want to do like everyone knows like the little Michael Jackson Moonwalker, how there's just like a whole video, the whole everything. I kinda had an idea for that and uh talk to you, talk to our buddy Roy about it. And, yeah, mm -hmm. I'd like to definitely like to piece that together and uh see what I can do with that. Yeah. So like along with everything else I mentioned, you mm -hmm. also make your own beats. Yes. I uh it's just a good way to release, you know? And yeah. besides you know, playing the guitar and other Andromedas with Marvin here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, I try to get down on some uh, hip hop beats, uh, soul beats. Uh, definitely love trying to experiment with that. And yeah, if you guys seen any of the videos that Lost in Portland does, those are 
songs. All your music. <laughs> yeah, They're okay, all, all your all music. All my songs, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so another way to get the yeah the, the love vibe out there for the Pacific Northwest. So is, talk to me, uh, you also have a photography career. Yes. That, um, that which, you've been developing, yeah. You helped with that, man. I'll start asking this guy all the questions. You totally helped with that. Just getting me out there and showing me, you know, what else is there to offer and help me release, you know, and just kind of stop everything in the moment and just take it all in. And yeah. So yeah. it feels good to be able to share those uh, those waterfalls with everyone, obviously, because we know what happened with the gorge and some mm -hmm. of those areas aren't accessible. So, yeah, yeah having those photos around... It's great to go back and look and be like, yeah, oh, it's, it's a good, good moment, good creative, good time. So what I love about you and what I love about hanging out with you, it's like, uh, you, you're not a man, you tend to not be a man of many words. Like, you tend to express yourself in a lot of your creative works. Yeah, definitely. Um, tell me, I mean, now I'm asking you for words. <laughs> <laughs> tell me what that drive is. What, what compels you to uh, continue to create uh, the work that you create? Uh, man, just, I don't know, actually. I feel like just to, to show the world, you know, I don't know, I'm mm -hmm. a big, I'm a big guy of love, you know, like, I don't know, I don't feel like everyone gets the opportunity to like, feel love and when I have the creative opportunity to share that with everyone that's kind of like my way of being like this is my love Hell that y'all yeah. get to experience you know Hell when I play yeah. the guitar that's like the sounds are like love that everyone gets to like hey all right I feel that so Dope. stopping the camera taking pictures is just like yeah you know that's just like good love like oh you turn and pow <laughs> shot, shot love you know that little gleam in the eye that smile or you yeah. know sun glare I don't know yeah yeah so, I'm, I'm cheesy I'm weird but <laughs> yeah just stuff like that you know it's just it's just yeah L-O-V-E that's just what I want to give back I can support that who else yeah. is down with love <laughs> um, Matt, for uh, our audience at home how could they reach out to you uh what Instagram um what Mr. Pacific Northwest Mr. Underscore Pacific Northwest as well as uh, for portraits, I like to get the stills, uh, Mr. Underscore PNW Underscore Portraits. Yeah. And then MP Photography on uh, Facebook. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And Thank here. You. And here. Online. Live in Portland. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Matt, Thanks, for coming man. out. Marvin, take it away. <laughs>
um, over a hundred different things you can add to the wine, all kinds of things of taking it away. You can um, really craft the thing and concoct it in a very food science-y sort of way. Yeah. Um, which makes it a very unnatural product as right. opposed to natural wines. So right. natural wines are the antithesis of that. Okay. It's farming organically or biodynamically or some sort of combination of the two. Mm -hmm. And that means no, like herbicides, no use of pesticides in the vineyards, um, any fungicides you do are naturally derived like um, sulfur, elemental sulfur, which is dug up from the ground and sprayed on it. And that's sort of a natural anti-fungicidal stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, everything that's going on in the vineyard is natural and it's, you know, to, um, you're worried about not only the health of the people who are consuming it at the end product, but it's the people who are working in the vineyards, as well as the biodiversity in the vineyard. You want to create uh, a space and um, a piece of land that's living, not dead. Mm -hmm. And it's the opposite of conventional in that way. And then once you get the grapes into the cellar, it's really all about not adding or taking anything away. So yeah. the winemaking is all about decisions you want to make about how long you want to leave it on the skins or macerate or when you want to do those sorts of things. But it's not mm -hmm. about altering any of the chemistry, adding anything to the wine or taking really anything away. And it's a really pure expression of the grapes grown on that vineyard in that part of the world in that year. So like true essence of like the terroir and, and yeah. like the, the farm in which it's coming from. Yes, yes, yes. And it's the purest expression you can get of wine. Awesome. So I would imagine like there are dynamic variances that happen when you produce natural wine. Yeah. So you get uh, a different product because it is um, agriculture um, and all, everything you do in farming varies from year to year. You know, whether you have a hot year or a cold year, whether it's wet, whether you get lots of hail and you know, damage the fruit or something like that. Mm -hmm. It all affects these sorts of things. And if you are doing it in a conventional way, you can kind of take all those things and then add all kinds of things and reconstruct the same thing every time. It's like making Coca-Cola or making a Cheeto. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing natural wine, you are going to get really something that's expressive of that year and of yeah. that thing. And so that's part of the fun about it. It's not only just like the great variety, but it's um, who's growing it where and what was the year like? What did it deliver to you? And that's like really... And that's what we're really looking for when we we're when we're drinking expensive vintage wines. Like we're looking for the expre the expression or like the conditions of the year and let's yeah, say but 2010 or What I'm offering is not just expensive vintage wines. It's really about everyday drinking wines and it's yeah. the things that you want to um, have indulge on having your dinner table or you're out on a picnic or just for the heck of it because yeah. you come home and you want to like have a glass of wine or something like that. And it should be really thought of as anything else. It should be incorporated, I think, in a way that we incorporate all kinds of other food into our lives. And it's mm -hmm. not a, a really posh, expensive, snooty thing. It's an everyday kind of thing that you should be um, just really, yeah, like I said, incorporating into your everyday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About things. Um, tell me about, so you're curating some of these wineries. Uh, yeah, so the thing is... Um, Natural wine is a very, very small niche within the wine market because most of wine is made conventionally. It's made in large scales. Everyone um, that we have is small scale production farmers and vintners that um, are really passionate about what they do and care about the land and, and, and stewardship of the land and the environment and the things that they're doing. So um, it's uh, here in Portland, you have to, as a retailer, you have to buy everything from a distributor. Mm -hmm. who gets it from an importer and stuff like that. So what we have to do is go through all the various distributors and pick out the, the one or two guys or a couple guys here or there or, or women that are making um, natural wines. And then we come together and bring them all together in one place so that when you walk into Ardor, you know that every bottle on the shelf is a bottle of natural wine. You don't have to do any of the legwork or any of the guesswork, and you just have to focus on, okay, what is it that I want? Do I want sparkling wine or do I want <coughs> white wine? Do I want something crisp and fresh or do I want something deep and structured? Um, all those sorts of things you can worry about, not like what's in my wine. Right. Do I have to worry about carcinogens? Do I have to worry about any of those sorts of things? Right. You were uh, mentioning the first time we talked about like the food and drug administration actually does not monitor yeah so th industry. that's the thing it's it's really hard for people to know what's in their wine because when you when you go to the grocery store most things you just take and you can turn around and it tells you exactly what's in it mm -hmm. um, 
But wine's not like that. If you ever turn over a wine bottle, you notice that there isn't a list of ingredients. You have no idea what's in it. Yeah. And so that makes it particularly hard for people who are, are conscientious about what they put into their body and the types of things <laughs> they want to consume. You have no idea, and they're not required to disclose. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we come in. I mean, I've been spent, like, a vast majority of my life, like, learning about this. You know, I work in winemaking. I do viticulture. I've been drinking wine for a long time. And I have just a... Um, an intimate knowledge of all these sorts of things and do a lot of research and just been involved in the whole scene mm -hmm. and I so I know these things but I also know that most people don't have the time or the effort or the ability to to discern that and to do all of the legwork right. that it takes to do that and so that's what I and my business partner do um, for everyone and we yeah. curate it into a selection we have currently over 250 different bottles of natural wine from all over the world from local to far-flung places, um, all kinds of grapes from the things that you most recognize like Pinot and Chardonnay to really obscure varieties that you've never even heard of. Mm -hmm. um, they're all different. They're all fun. They can go anywhere from inexpensive to expensive depending on what you want. But mm -hmm. really, it's about taking away the pretense of wine and just really getting in there and learning about it and enjoying it and having a great time. Yeah, and on that note, uh, you've brought some wine. Yeah, so I brought something just, you know, <laughs> Let a me move this for awkward you. hotel phone. Um, <laughs> so this is um, a natural wine. It's um, an Italian wine from a young winemaker. Um, it's from Emilia Romagna in the northern part of Italy. Um, he's a natural producer. Um, and this is made, it's it's a sparkling wine, but it's not made like champagne. It's in, in the older style, the method ancestral, also called um, uh, pet lot natural or pet nat for short. Is that like a, a yeast? Different so yeast the thing or? is, I, the idea is that you s take the wine, you um, you crush the grapes, you let it start fermenting naturally, sort of spontaneously, mm -hmm. and then as it's fermenting before it's done, you bottle it before it finishes fermenting, and you put a crown cap on it like this, like a beer bottle, mm -hmm. and you let it finish fermenting in the bottle, and inside the bottle it traps the CO2 and that carbonates the wine. Nice. And so then when So you bottle conditioned. Bottle conditioned naturally. natural wine. Yes. It, oh man. Goes along with it. <laughs> I'm excited for this. <laughs> so. Uh. <laughs> Guys, I'm a server and one of the most awkward things is opening the bottle at the table. <laughs> <laughs> so cheers to you, Victor, for doing this yeah, on the yeah. show. <laughs> and for a bottle cap, like I said, this is unpretentious wine. Yeah. It's really made for, um, you know, just enjoying here in the moment. And so, as awesome. you can see, it's, um, it's sparkling, it's kind of cloudy, it hasn't been filtered or messed with in any sort of sense. Um, like a lot of effervescence coming out of the bottle yeah, immediately. Yeah, and this yeah. is all done naturally just through um, um, just natural, spontaneous processes that happen. Cheese and charcuterie plate. This is, <laughs> this smells yes. amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, and Cheers. you don't have to drink it like this. I mean, oftentimes you drink it from wine glasses or when I'm with my friends and we're just hanging out. I mean, straight from the bottle is how we do it. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so cheers, cheers to man. natural wines. To natural wines. Yeah, and anybody else who wants to try some, please feel free. I'll pass it around. <laughs> yeah, Cheers to that. How about to <laughs> the musician? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, where, once again, um, tell us about the location of uh, your winery. So, we're in the inner southeast, um, the old sort of industrial part. It's mm -hmm. um, 729 Southeast Morrison Street. Um, it's, it's a mixture of businesses. Um, um, from industrial businesses to retail businesses to mm -hmm. a little bit of people living there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's right off of I-5, off the Morrison exit. If you, It's awesome. right off the Morrison Bridge, just on the east side of Grand Avenue. And uh, do you have pretty simple business hours? Are you open uh, Yeah, so we're, no, we're not seven days a week right now. We just opened our first full week of, um, we had a soft opening. Um, it was just over a week ago, and then my business partner got married this weekend, mm. so that took away that. And we're like officially open starting Wednesday. We're gonna go Wednesday through Sunday for now, two to eight during the weekdays, so people can stop by after work, plenty yeah. of time to grab stuff if they want to. The weekends, it's Saturdays twelve to eight, and Sunday twelve to six. So. I'm so happy we caught you early for this interview. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, one more thing, your social media. Please. Yeah. So I mean, obviously website ArterNaturalWines.com. 
and we mostly do stuff on Instagram. So if you follow us, we're post, always posting wines, part you know stuff that's in our wine club, cool things that we have. Um, we're really all about Instagram more than anything because yeah. it's a really good way to like visually express and to put words to things we're doing all in one place. Yeah. Awesome, Victor. Thank you. Yes. For, thank you very much. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for the wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> Marvin, take it away. Thank you very much. Yeah, don't do it unless it's a. Is it picking up my? It's it's picking you up. Picking up my digitals. Okay, <laughs> we're good. We are good. Uh, thanks for having me here. This is a great show. Give it up for yourselves <laughs> for being here. <laughs> this like incredibly diverse room of people. You got black people. You got white people. You got a dude with a silver mohawk. Give it up for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a minority. What? Is, uh. uh I live in Portland right now. Uh, I experienced something fairly racist in Portland the other day. I, uh, I went to a ramen cart, and the guy working at the ramen cart looked at me and asked me what I wanted. And I looked down at him, and I said, I want the pork mizu ramen, extra mushrooms. And then he looks back at me without any hesitation, and he says, you're going to have some fried chicken with that? <laughs> I was like, is that is that a trick question? What am I supposed to say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have some fried chicken with that. That's gonna be that'll be good. By the way, it's called katsu, you uncultured swine. Why'd you just call it fried chicken to me? I see you it says katsu on the board. You didn't have to say just charge me that extra three dollars, dog. That sounds good. <laughs> it's a bad moment as a black man to realize that fried chicken tastes good on everything. Even a big ass bowl of soup. <laughs> same thing happened to me though. I went to another restaurant in Portland. The same thing happened. The guy looked at me and asked me if I wanted fried chicken. And I got mad this time. I made a scene, I went off, I was like, God damn it! Toddy's fucking Racist ass white people always projecting their stereotypes upon me. Let me see the manager, sir. This is a Popeyes. You need to calm down. <laughs> calm down. He's like, you don't have to get fried chicken, sir. We got mad coleslaw in the back. We have so much coleslaw. We know how black people don't buy coleslaw here. <laughs> Right now, I'm the only uh, black dude working at a bagel shop, a coffee shop, which I imagine is be a lot like being like the only white dude working at, you know, like a black barber shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like nobody trusts me. <laughs> I'm looking at white people all day asking them, hey, can I make you a latte? And they're like, no, I'm good, bro, I'm good. <laughs> I'll have Rose make my latte today. She's got the right... Uh, <laughs> She's got the right technique, you know what I mean? She's got the right technique. 
I've been trying to like find a way to ask my boss nicely, like, "Hey, dog, can you can your next hire be based on race, like this race? You know what I mean? Like, I'm getting lonely back here. I really could use somebody back here that can agree with me on the new Two Chains album, but I'm lonely. <laughs> Nobody here." Then I thought about it for a second. I realized I don't want another black person working here because I'm a bad employee. <laughs> if another black person gets hired at this establishment, that means I could get fired because I'm bad at my job. I'm not a good employee, you guys. I come in late all the time. I don't think everything is an adequate answer for what's on the everything bagel. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that's what garlic and seeds you guys that's all it is it's literally all it is it's like the white that's like the whites only section of bagels is the everything bagel how many white people got to line up and order everything bagels before i get to call it a stereotype that's my question <laughs> like how many white people got to line up and order bagels before i get to like be at the cash register and look down at a guy and say oh you're getting a latte you gonna have an everything bagel with that? <laughs> That's all I'm asking for, just a little bit of equality. <laughs> it's a good time. You guys ever wish you could like go back in time to like an argument you were having with your parents that you couldn't have at the time because you were too stupid? and five years old, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I wish I could go back in time and tell my dad, hey dad, why don't you stop calling it Pokemans? It's not pronounced Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> why you do that? <laughs> Keep calling it Pokemans? <laughs> I know what you're doing, dad. My action figure is a little cluttered on the, on the living room floor. You're trying to watch the game. I get it, dad. That does not, however, give you the right to come in here, devalue my feelings and my legitimate interests by mispronouncing the names on purpose. I know what you're doing, Dad. You're not slick. What's your excuse, Dad? You watch the show with me every day of the week. You know it's pronounced Pokemon. You guess the mystery Pokemon every day of the week. Much better than I can, because you know what? My five-year-old brain can't comprehend shapes without colors. I'm not ashamed of it. I think it's Pikachu every time. It's not Pikachu. Tired of you yelling at me to come clean my Gokus about the refrigerator. Dad, they can't all be named Goku, Dad. They have different names. You're the one who took me to buy these action figures with Mom's money. You remember that, Dad? <laughs> No, I will not take the Goku action figure out of the refrigerator. Because as you can clearly see, he is training in the hyperbolic time chamber. <laughs> if I take him out too soon, he clearly wouldn't have trained long enough to beat Cell. You want the house to blow up today, Dad? I'm just saying, shit's tense. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. You know, sometimes, Dad, I can't wait till you get old and senile. So out of the kindness of my heart and the reluctance of my wife's heart, you'll have to come live with us. <laughs> Can't wait for that one faithful day that I catch you slipping. Leaving your shit all over my house, your little cassette tapes and shit. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> hey, Dad, why don't you come in here and clean these James Browns up off my entertainment system? <laughs> trying to listen to some Frank Ocean. <laughs> you come in here and clean these slim quicks about my refrigerator. <laughs> You're going to be like, it's insulin, son, it's insulin. I don't give a damn. <laughs> Shit out my hyperbolic time chamber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I go hard with the Dragon Ball Z <laughs> It's an untapped market right there, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z jokes. Um, I think it's really important for uh, black people to travel overseas so they can experience racism from other cultures. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I traveled to Bolivia one time. 
They treat black people com- completely differently than they treat than than <laughs> Americans treat black people. <laughs> like I walked around, I walked around Bolivia for six weeks before I realized that all the people were pinching each other because black people are signing good luck. Yeah, right? Like, that is the most offensive, most <laughs> flattering form of racism I've ever heard in my life. Like, I was, was like, ooh, but give me a hug. That's, a, that's, that's very flattering. <laughs> One kid looked up at me and yelled, Negrito, Negrito. Before I beat this kid up for calling me nigga on the street, my friend stopped me and he was like, Calm down, Chris, calm down. Negrito is actually Spanish for strong black man. <laughs> and I was like, you goddamn right it is. <laughs> Negrito. And then he waited for me to calm down, and I was, and he was like, actually, Chris, Negrito is actually Spanish for little black boy. <laughs> I was like, so he did call me nigga on the street. That's what... <laughs> Okay, you guys, that's my time, I think. Before we have you leave, uh, where can uh, my fans at home find you um, on social media? You can find me at Chris J. PDX on uh, Facebook. Uh, Chris Johnson on Facebook. Uh, me and my co-producer, we run a show at Alberta Street every Monday, every second and fourth Monday of every month. Uh, called Slack Excellence. It's coming to you live starting April 30th. Awesome. During happy hour. Dope. Dope. Chris, Woo! thanks for coming on. Woo! Hell yeah! <laughs> Before we go on to our next guest, I'm super excited to bring her out. Uh, I've got to give a special thank you to Mad Hippie Skincare Products and Abbey Creek Winery. Uh, without them, we couldn't be here in our tiny ass studio doing this with an alien on stage. Guys. <laughs> I'm super excited to bring her on. I've been hooked on her podcast slash YouTube video series. Uh, Adrian Gunn, come on out. <laughs> Woo! Yay! We're here. We are. Yeah. Look at us. <laughs> From the hip with Adrian Gunn. Yes. Let's talk about this series. Yeah, that is the title of the show that I do. Yeah. <laughs> you did a little research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, it's conversations in the service of passion, purpose, and play. I, It's pretty fun. I, I, I got really excited because we're just going to have a conversation on your show about the show that I do where we have conversations on the show. I don't mm-hmm. know. It felt mm-hmm. really meta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was really excited super. for it. I frequently talk to entrepreneurs, artists, creatives, a bit, bit like, a bit like this format, and yeah. we get into. Uh, well, it's it's sort of this like curated in the moment thing. Seriously. I'm trying yeah. to capture authentic connection. I I've been chewing on this idea for about three years, mm-hmm. and I don't know if this happened to you, if this was why you know you've I you've started, you've started this. this. Yes, yeah. but like. As a musician, as a person who trained myself in personal development, like I, I'm trained in ninja Jedi skills to help people like shift their patterns and baggage really quickly. Mm-hmm. When I started doing myself for a living, uh, the world became more of like a all like 24 hour spiritual quest yeah. of of connecting with people, of like magic moments happening all over the place, mm-hmm. and I kept finding myself saying holy crap, I wish I'd had a camera on that conversation. Like, I kept yeah. bumping into people that just unexpectedly had so much wisdom yeah. to offer. Just life-altering conversations. Is this kind of... No, no, I, for you? I, I feel like this is my experience in Portland in general. Is, is I meet so many people on the streets. It's just, like, 
like this intelligence, these conversations, they're just so rich. Um, that's a lot of the reason why I developed this show because I run into so many amazing people mm -hmm. on such a consistent basis. And yeah. I'm just like, I got to showcase that. The world needs to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and one of the impetus for me was geeking out in entrepreneuring and personal development. There's this theory, you've maybe some of you have heard it. Uh, your success and the quality of your life is dependent on like the, the five people you hang out with the most, right? Mm -hmm. And I think they sort of are suggesting you're supposed to just like dump or like upgrade your friends and family. But yeah. I got curious about, since I'd had the opportunity of meeting so many fabulous and fantastic people who would either have a life-altering conversation with me or I would, I would get a life-altering result from a conversation with them, I kept mm -hmm. wondering, like, how well do we know the five closest people in our life? Like, how, Interesting, yeah. how connected are we? How much are we taking interest in them? And so the, the earnest effort that I am doing with this show from the hip is turning a camera on as authentically and without trying to structure it to, to showcase what happens when you choose to find somebody interesting. Yeah. Because I know you do this <laughs> every week. When yeah. you choose to find someone interesting, they light up. Yeah. And magic happens. Yeah. And it goes in unexpected ways. Yeah. And it's been pretty, it's been a pretty it's big been, deal. So it's far. been great. Uh, like, I, I really enjoy the segments that you've posted on YouTube. Um, I, I, you could, you impart so much wisdom in these small conversations. And, yeah. And I like to say, like, you will find whatever you're looking for. So if you're looking for, like, anger in the world, you'll see it. Yeah. Like, and, But for me, I made that switch to, I just want to see people live their best lives. Yeah. And the best way to do that is to become a cheerleader for people to see themselves in such a light. Um, I think when people align themselves with their passion, we're able to, like, reap the rewards of, of so much and the community gains so much Absolutely. Uh, from those scenarios and I think that's exactly what you're doing with the show yeah and one of the things I, I got really excited about was I, I don't know maybe maybe you guys coffee or do drinks right mm -hmm. so the kinds of it's it's the arc of sitting down with a good friend having coffee mm -hmm. only maybe we've just met mm -hmm. and and discovering people we, we live in such a I don't know we have like initials and abbreviates for for phrases that are truncated versions of really con like concepts that are probably pretty harsh so text you can get misunderstood everybody lives in sound right. bites there's there's this way that part of our disconnection that's happening sometimes in our society is that we don't just take the time to fully just drop in yeah ready to connect ready for the some people do talk in 20 second bits. I've learned this from video editing, the yeah. show. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> some people have concepts that last 10 minutes, and some people, you know, mm -hmm. and, and when you choose to sit with them and explore who they are, yeah. it, changes, it changes all of us. Totally. When we're willing to sit down with somebody's actual story. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and sometimes we reveal things about ourselves that we didn't even they haven't even surfaced to our consciousness. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want to make it sound like it's all like positivity and like upgrading your lifestyle and that sort of thing. Because yeah. sometimes we talk about poop. Okay. Yeah, that's come up. And sometimes, <laughs> but it's just like every conversation's a bit different, yeah. you know? Like yeah. whatever the person I'm sitting with, whatever they're bringing. I, I was really excited because in the three years of gestating this idea, I had had a bunch of illnesses, I'd had issues in my own business, I'd had all these different markers of conversations that had changed my life, and so part of the curation is having people on. Uh, one of the episodes I'm excited about coming up, actually there are two in this direction, one of them is with a, a performer friend of mine who'd had Lyme disease and injuries that stalled his, he thought he had to quit singing forever. So we talked about the the ways that that, you know, diseases and illness and, and your low points can, can help you forward. And then the next one is about uh, a friend that's suffered a lot of grief lately. And I had also lost a really good friend of mine. And so, like, there's, there's tenderness in dark moments and there's weird kinds of joy when you drop in and yeah. explore people in conversation. So you're trying to get, like, the holality. I'm going to make that word. Holality. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> of life, yes. like, through conversation. And, and, and I love that it is from the hip. Because you discover, like I said before, so much about yourself when you just go. Yeah. 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 I found pretty nearly every interview, I have this moment where I was like, I have 
no idea how I'm going to do this. I, uh, but I sit down and we just go. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's sort of a recent motto of, of showing up to life. Yeah. I One of the interviews is with a woman who is a producer for Oprah and Dr. Phil. So Big I'm time. interviewing a professional interviewer hired by the like the top caliber TV shows and mm -hmm. I I decided how to prepare for that was just to um, not no <laughs> <laughs> because like what I'm not gonna suddenly like jump through that refrigerator time machine thing what happened but yeah. I'm not gonna like <laughs> find a way to be a different person than I am now so yeah. just like yeah. figuring out a way to say yes and what's great is the people who have invited to the show are doing the same thing yeah it's like a leap of faith together on a couch I feel like we're in a similar journey, <laughs> and a lot of a lot of my preparedness is um, getting to know who I am mm -hmm. as an individual, and to watch you do it uh, in your series, it's like it, it's obvious to me that you are grounding yourself as an individual so that you can have these conversations with high-level individuals who are accomplishing so much. Oh yeah. Tell me a bit about your process of like getting to know yourself. Yeah, so I, I guess I have this funny knack. I also do like weird videos where I turn the camera around and, and or I'll jump on stage and I get this cut. Like people will say to me, "Oh my gosh, you made that look so easy. I, I wish I could do that." So there's a there's a way in which there's actually quite a lot of craft and training. I've actually specifically trained in communication forms and acting and music, performance, sales, marketing, it's all forms of communication. And most recently, I studied hypnotherapy and neuro-linguistic programming. So mm. the, there are a lot of things that I'm specifically doing that are about like building rapport, mm -hmm. about asking questions and using my language in a particular way. So not, not to like bum everybody out and say, I'm highly trained in conversations, but that is one of the things that's going on. So partly I do uh, some energy grounding before mm -hmm. I sit with a person. And there's a way that I that I like to utilize myself to help other people feel comfortable mm -hmm. and a way that I like to ease into the conversation so that they're willing to and more easily able to reveal mm -hmm. f fun things that are juicy. Or some of it is being trained in hearing the underneath. Like when I'm helping somebody shift a pattern, like if they're a client of mine, yeah. you know, like they wanna quit smoking. I can hear in the language they use some of the old stuff that created the the okay. habit in the first place. And so that I've got that turned on yeah. while I'm having these conversations. And then there's just just all those like lonely years of watching lots of stand up comedy and sitcoms yeah. and movies <laughs> yeah. that I like to tap into. Yeah. I think it's important for all of the binge watching of entertainment that I've had yeah. to have it fully utilized. Interesting. That's awesome. Adrian Gunn. Uh, from the hip with yeah. Adrian Gunn. Um, tell us how we can find it on the internet. Well, the cool thing is that nobody had like done from the hip show at all of the places. So you can go to Instagram, like at from the hip show or Twitter at from the hip show. But it's from the hip show dot com. We have YouTube and and there's a couple ways. If you were the kind of person who's super busy, you can just watch all of our clips. They have like magic moments, so you can watch the clips, or you can yeah. choose to watch the episodes. Both of those are fun experiences, and I. Yeah. I'd love to hear, if you, if you choose to go see it, I'd love to hear your feedback, well, comments, and that sort of thing. Uh, we're going to record one, I think, this Friday, right? Is that what's going to happen? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yes. That's going to be I'm awesome. I'm so excited for that. Um, I'm so excited to have you on the show, and I'm looking forward to our interview on your show. Me too. <laughs> Thanks for coming Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Thank Marvin, you. take it away. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's here because I've only seen him on MySpace pictures. Is Kevin here? No. Okay, we're going to shoot on out to our musical performance. Um, I'm really excited to bring them on. Uh, Ivan to the Moon, a awesome duet. Come on out! <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, 
everyone. We're called Ivan to the Moon, and this first song for you is called Waves. Take me 
going to the moon, everybody. Um, that was awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, how can my uh, audience find you on social media? Uh, Instagram. Instagram at Ivan to the Moon. And uh, soon we'll have an EP out. So yeah, we're working on our yeah, first EP, and uh, soon we're gonna launch some other social media pages. So keep cool. an eye out. Dope. I got the waves. I got all the waves. Nice. <laughs> I know it's a small stage, but I'm going to need everybody out on the stage. Come on out. All right. Come on out. <laughs> And every week we bring you uh, Portland creatives, Portland artists, Portland musicians and comedians. I'm so excited for everybody who's here today and uh, I'm looking forward to the coming weeks. Thank you so much for watching. We're out. Peace.